the previous lecture we uh, discussed about the random process, uh, then uh, discussed when it becomes a stationary random process, uh, then we uh, also defined the mean variance of the ensemble, then uh, how a stationary process can be simplified as a ergodic process. Uh, then we looked at the autocorrelation function, cross correlation function, then the Fourier relationship or Fourier transform relationship that uh, exists between the power spectral density function and the autocorrelation function that is they form the Fourier transform pair that was discussed. Then the significance, physical significance of the power spectral density function physical significance of the cross power spectral density functions were discussed. Uh, today let us uh, look into when we have got more than one random process, then how do we uh, define them? Because uh, in a particular structure you may have more than one uh, excitations and each excitation could be a random process. The output similarly could be more than one and then uh, we have to define this output and the relationship that exists between the outputs that also we may have to look in. Uh, therefore, uh, the essential relationships that exist uh, between a set of input random process and a set of output random processes does must be understood uh, clearly. Uh, here uh, in this slide you can see that Y is a random process consisting of the two random processes they are weighted by A1 and A2 that is Y is equal to A1 X1 plus A2 X2 and that can be written in a matrix form as A1, A2, X1, X2 by equation 4.28. Then if we are wanting to find out the mean square value or the variance of Y, then the variance of Y can be given by the expected value of A1 square X1 square plus A2 square X2 square plus A1, A2, X1, X2 and plus A2, A1, X2, X1. So, the last term is purposefully written like that, that is A1, A2, X1, X2 can be also written as A2, A1, X2, X1. So, instead of writing 2 A1, A2, uh, X1, X2, we put it in this fashion. Then since the mean square value or for the variance for the zero you know, mean process can be written as the area under the power spectral density function curve. Therefore, E expected value of y square is replaced by minus infinity to plus infinity S y y omega d omega. Similarly, uh, expected value of a 1 square x 1 square that can be written as a 1 square integration of minus infinity to plus infinity s x x omega d omega and that way uh, you can write down all the terms uh, within the expectation in the above equation as um, the quantities that is shown in equation 4.30. And you can see that the last two terms they are x x 1 x 2 and the other one s x 2 x 1 that is the cross power spectral density function between x 1 x 2 and cross power spectral density function between x 2 x 1. And uh, they are they form the complex conjugate relationship that we have discussed before. 
Uh, therefore, if there is a single power spectral density function, uh, cross power spectral density function on uh, x 1, x 2 known, then one can find out the cross power spectral density function s x 2, s x 1 by simply taking the complex conjugate of s x 1, s x 2. Now, the uh, integration uh, on the right hand side now take uh, these form that is we can take out the integration minus infinity to plus infinity outside and we can write down uh, the entire uh, thing within the integration that is equation 4.31 and when we compare the left hand side to the right hand side we get simply this relationship that is s y y that is power spectral density function of y is equal to a 1 square into power spectral density function of x 1 plus a 2 square of power spectral density function s x 2 plus a 1 a 2 uh, of uh, into cross power spectral density function between x 1 x 2 and a 2 a 1 uh, into power spectral uh, cross power spectral density function between x 2 and x 1. And this can be written in the matrix form and given in equation 4.32 a and if we say that S x x is the matrix that is shown above that is S x 1, S x 1, S x 2, S x 2 form the diagonal elements and S x 2, S x 1 and S x 1, S x 2 they form the two of diagonal elements of S x x then the equation 4.32 can be written in brief notation as s y is equal to a t s x x a. So, uh, if we have a uh, equation of the form that y is equal to a matrix a into x then one can find out the value of s y from the previous relationship that we have discussed before. Uh, the specific condition when we write down y is equal to a into x uh, for that s y will be simply is equal to s square into s x that follows from the previous equation. This equation which we have derived before that is uh, s y y is equal to a t into s x x a that can be generalized for uh, a vector uh, relationship that is the relationship that exists between two vectors y and x and say y is related to vector x through matrix A then uh, one can write down s y will be is equal to a into s x x into a t where s x x will be a matrix of size m by m and s y y will be a matrix of size n by n. The diagonal terms of s y matrix will be s y s y 1 y 1 s y 2 y 2 s y 3 y 3 so on and of diagonal terms will be s y 1 y 2 s y 1 y 3 and on the other half of the uh, diagonal it will be s y 2 y 1 s y 2 y 3 so on. So, uh, we have a matrix uh, s y y similarly uh, s x x would be a matrix and the terms or the or the elements of the matrix will be similar to s y y matrix and uh, the matrix the coefficient matrix A that exist as a prefix to x t vector uh, that comes on the left hand side A into s x x A t where A t is the transpose of matrix A. So, this is the basic relationship uh, that exists uh, between two sets of random variable connected by a coefficient matrix. Uh, 
and uh, if the power spectral density function of the matrix uh, of the random variables x t that is x t contains uh, is a vector and contains x 1, x 2, x 3 so on and then uh, we construct a power spectral density function matrix for this uh, vector of random um, processes which will be called as S x x and if that is given to us then we can find out the power spectral density function matrix for the y vector that is uh, the y vector consisting of uh, a number of random processes y1, y2, y3 and so on. Now, this can be further extended uh, or generalized uh, to equation 4.36 that is a vector of random processes is uh, a summation or rather weighted summation of two random vectors x 1 and x 2 by the coefficient matrix uh, A and B. Uh, then the power spectral density function matrix of Y is given by A S x 1 S x 1 A t plus B S x 2 S x 2 B t plus A S x 1 S x 2 B t that is the cross power spectral density function x 1 and x 2 when we are considering then A uh, comes as a prefix and B t is post multiplied. Similarly, for x 2 x 1 the B is a uh, matrix uh, which is a prefix to S x 2 S x 1 and A t is a post multiplied. Now, the next relationship that uh, exists uh, uh, between the input and output. Say for example, if we take the uh, equation 4.34, then in this equation the input is x t and the output is y t, then the cross power spectral density function between the input and output that is S x y is written as A into S x x. So, that can be easily proved uh, from the relationship that uh, one can show over here in this uh, with the help of this simple equation. So, if we write y is equal to A x that is A is a simple one constant x is a, a random process y is another random process then one can write down r x y tau this is the cross um, uh, auto correlation or uh, cross correlation function between uh, x and y tau that can be written as expected value of x t into y t plus tau and if we substitute for y t plus tau from this equation, then it becomes expected value of x t into A x t plus tau. Taking out A, we have A into expected value of x t into x t plus tau and that is nothing but A into R x x tau. Now, if we take a Fourier transform of both sides. Uh, then we have R x y tau e to the power minus i omega tau d tau and on this side we will have R x x tau e to the power minus i omega tau d tau. Now, this integration of course, will be equal to minus infinity to plus infinity and not 0 minus infinity to plus infinity and this we know uh, that is equal to S x y because uh, in the last lecture we have seen that the cross power spectral density function and cross correlation function they form a Fourier transform pair. Similarly, auto correlation function and the power spectral density function they form the Fourier transform pair. Therefore, this quantity this integration becomes equal to S x and this integration becomes equal to S x y. So, we can see that S x y uh, 
that is the cross uh, power spectral density function between the input and the output this is the input and this is the output is equal to a into s x. So, this can be generalized uh, in this particular form uh, which is given in equation 4.38. In the 4.38 uh, we see that s x y is written as matrix A into s x x. So, uh, if we know the basic relationship uh, between the uh, input vector and output vector, then we can find out the cross power spectral density function matrix uh, from the relationship given by equation 4.38. Next, uh, we uh, have to know in many cases uh, about the power spectral density function of the derivatives of the process. For example, if we know the power spectral density function uh, of x that is uh, uh, s x as a matrix of uh, power spectral density function of a random um, processes set of random processes x 1, x 2, x t x etcetera. Then we may have to find out the s x dot that is the power spectral density function of the velocity and the power spectral density function of the acceleration. So, that can be derived uh, again from the basic relationship uh, that is uh, shown over here. Uh, for example, if we take a single uh, variable that is uh, if we take x uh, as a random process, then the autocorrelation function of the uh, process R x tau that will be equal to expected value of x t and x t plus tau that we have already seen. Now, if I differentiate it with respect to uh, tau, then uh, it becomes R x dot tau and this differentiation uh, can be written as expected value of x t and multiplied by x dot t plus tau because tau is existing over here. Therefore, we differentiate this term and uh, this becomes x dot t plus tau. Now, since uh, in a stationary random process the characteristics of the uh, process that is the uh, mean square value or the power spectral density function or r x tau that remains invariant with the time shift. Then we can interchange tau over here then the first term we can write down as x t minus tau and second term then becomes x dot t. Next we differentiate uh, this once more that is d 2 d tau 2 uh, into r x tau that becomes is equal to minus expected value of x dot t minus tau this is differentiated once more and this remains x dot t. This is uh, not differentiated because it does not contain the term tau and uh, this becomes by definition minus r x dot tau because if the um, autocorrelation function of velocity will be expected value of x dot t minus tau into x dot t or x dot t into x dot t plus tau whatever we wish to define. So, we see that d 2 d tau 2 into r x tau or of, of r x tau that is equal to minus r x dot tau. Now, if I differentiate r x tau with respect to tau, then we get i omega s x e to the power i omega tau d omega integrate 
and integration is from minus infinity to plus infinity because of the fact that Rx tau as such is equal to the Fourier inverse Fourier transform of Sx that is the power spectral density function and the autocorrelation function of the process they form the Fourier transform pair that we discussed before. Therefore, Rx tau is equal to Sx into e to the power i omega tau d omega. Now, if I differentiate this with respect to tau then we get i omega into Sx e to the power i omega tau d omega. So, the uh, first differentiation of Rx tau that gives me an expression uh, like this. Similarly, if I uh, differentiate it once more then it becomes uh, minus omega square because i square omega square will be equal to minus omega square minus omega square s x e to the power i omega tau d omega. Now, if I take this expression and the previous expression over here that is d 2 d tau to r x tau is equal to minus r x dot tau this and this if we equate then we becomes r x dot tau equal to omega square s x e to the power i omega tau d omega minus infinity to plus infinity. Now, since r x tau itself can be written as s x dot e to the power i omega tau d omega that is the autocorrelation function of velocity and the power spectral density function of velocity they are related to Fourier transform um, uh, pair. Then if we compare this and this because both of them are equal to r x dot tau then we come to this basic relationship s x dot is equal to omega square s x. Similarly, uh, one can find out s x double dot is equal to omega to the power 4 into s x. Thus, if we know the power spectral density function of a random process then one can find out the power spectral density function of the velocity of the process and the acceleration of the process using these basic relationships and they are used uh, in solving many structural engineering problems. Now, uh, in this 4.48 and 4.49 uh, in these equations these uh, basic relationship between the power spectral density function of velocity and acceleration with the power spectral density function of the displacement uh, they are shown. With this uh, background now let us uh, get into uh, the CSO that is single input single output and uh, in the single input and single output uh, we have only a single degree of freedom system in which uh, the excitation is say p t and the uh, output from the uh, process is x t. So, that is uh, shown here uh, in this uh, transparent uh, in this particular uh, figure. Uh, this is a single degree freedom system and uh, the p t is the input and x t is the output. The frequency component of them are shown over here and the characteristics of the single degree of freedom system is represented by its frequency response function h omega. Uh, 
let us uh, try to recall what is this h omega that is frequency response function. Uh, if we write down the equation of motion for a single degree freedom system, it is uh, like this. And uh, when we have uh, earthquake or the support excitation in particular, then P t becomes equal to minus m x double dot g. That is uh, this, this is a definition of m x double dot g. Now, since uh, we are trying to define the entire thing in frequency domain, then we write down x t to be is equal to x omega e to the power i omega t. Uh, that is, uh, we are Fourier synthesizing in other uh, words uh, using uh, the FFT algorithm. Then P t as equal to P omega e to the power i omega t, if we do this and substitute this into this equation, then we get this basic relationship in frequency domain for the single degree of freedom system that is x omega the frequency contents of the uh, output that is related to the frequency contents of the input that is the load p omega by this equation or x omega can be written as equal to h omega into p omega where h omega is nothing but k minus m omega square plus i c omega inverse of that. Now, uh, this h omega is called the frequency response function of the single degree of freedom system. Similarly, if we have a multi degree freedom system, then one can extend from this the definition of the, uh, the frequency response function matrix of the multi degree of freedom system which will be defined as capital H omega is equal to k minus m omega square where here k will be the k matrix, m is the mass matrix and c is the damping matrix and inverse of this entire thing is known as the frequency response function matrix of this system. Uh, this is uh, also known as FRF of the system frequency response function of the system. And if we wish to characterize any dynamic system be it a single degree or multi degree freedom system, then uh, it can be completely characterized by this FRF that is the frequency response function either in the form of a matrix or as a single quantity uh, for a single degree freedom system. And uh, the, uh, uh, the quantities over here in this, they are generally of the uh, in, in a complex form, each element is in a complex form. And if we in particular say uh, look at this, uh, this uh, uh, these terms x omega term will be in the form of a i plus uh, j that is the imaginary. Uh, uh, notation into B i and uh, amplitude uh, i th amplitude is given by a square plus b square and the i th phase will be given by tan inverse b by a that we discussed before in connection with your Fourier uh, series analysis. Uh, so, therefore, uh, the <coughs> any uh, function x t can be broken up into a number of, of the harmonics, harmonic has an amplitude and a phase angle. Uh, all these things we discussed in detail uh, while discussing about the FFT and uh, the Fourier synthesis of the time histories. And uh, using that particular concept, one can find out the frequency uh, response function of a single degree freedom system or a multi degree freedom system by a frequency response function matrix. So, uh, this is highlighted over here with the help of this diagram provided we are able to characterize this 
of a system, then one can find out the response of that system to any external excitation which can be represented in the form of its frequency contents. Now, with this fundamental thing in mind, uh, let us look into how we uh, try to solve a single degree freedom system for a random uh, excitation. Now, if we wish to write down simply the frequency component of the response x omega, then it it is equal to h omega into p omega. So, that uh, basically we have seen or proved before. In the case of uh, the ground motion or the support motion, p becomes equal to minus m x double dot g. Uh, therefore, p omega becomes here is equal to minus x dot uh, x double dot g omega provided we uh, divide the left hand side and right hand side of the equation of motion by m and the definition of h omega uh, becomes equal to omega n square minus omega square plus twice i xi omega n omega uh, because k by m would become equal to omega n square and the c by m will turn out to be this. So, this becomes the uh, frequency response function of a single degree freedom system uh, where m becomes equal to unity. Now, uh, using equation uh, 5 4.51 a, one can find out the absolute value square of x omega that is we write down x omega multiplied by x omega star that is the complex conjugate of that. So, multiplication of these two quantities will become absolute value square of x omega that will be equal to h omega uh, absolute square and p omega absolute square. So, uh, the relationship that exists between the absolute squares of the responses at each frequency is related to the multiplication of the absolute value square of the frequency response function and the absolute value squares of the excitation at each frequency. Uh, next we come to again the Percival's theorem which states that the mean square value of the process is uh, nothing but the summation of the absolute value square of the uh, 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 absolute value squares uh, at each frequency. So, uh, using this relationship one can write down the mean square value of the response to be is equal to h omega absolute square and p omega absolute square at each frequency because multiplication of these two is equal to this that you have shown before in the previous equation. And if t tends to infinity, then this entire summation uh, becomes an integration and we have got this relationship that is 0 to alpha infinity is equal to h omega square uh, absolute square into s p d omega. Now, uh, this uh, thing can be shown uh, with the help of uh, this diagram. Say uh, this is the power spectral density function. On or the uh, PS the power spectral density function of P. Then, if I take a small element over here over d omega, then the d omega into SP uh, 
uh, S p that becomes equal to absolute value square uh, at this particular omega. And if we sum up all the absolute value square in this diagram, then they would be equal to that sum will be equal to the mean square value of the process that we have seen. So, S p d omega and p omega absolute square they can be related and using that relationship uh, what we have done we have replaced in this particular equation absolute value square that is the absolute value square of, of, of the excitation at uh, omega that we have replaced by S p d omega. So, the mean square value of the response can be shown to be equal to product of these two. Now, since the mean square value also of the response also can be written as 0 to omega s x omega d omega here what we have done instead of integrating up to infinity uh, we integrate up to a finite, finite frequency after which the value of s x uh, becomes uh, 0. So, if we uh, uh, integrate up to that 0 to omega s x omega d omega then we get the mean square value of the response that is 1 by t x t square d t that is replaced by this equation. Uh, then that becomes equal to uh, uh, the right hand side which we have shown before that is in the in the previous case this particular equation. Uh, in this we have replaced this integration by this integration s x omega d omega. Now, if we look into this uh, two integrations then from uh, that it immediately follows that s x omega becomes is equal to h omega absolute square into s p and s x omega also can be written as h omega into s p multiplied by the complex conjugate of h omega, because this complex conjugate of h omega and this h omega they becomes equal to absolute value square. Now, this derivation that you have obtained uh, was apparent from the this equation itself. In this equation, we see that two random processes that is x omega is a random process, p omega is a random process, this is an input and this is an output and if x omega is related to p omega by a weighting function that is say in the previous case what we have done y is equal to a s x if we write then we have seen that s x becomes equal to s square into or s y is equal to s square into s x. So, if we remember that then from this uh, relationship itself we can say that s x will be equal to h omega absolute square multiplied by s p. Uh, here it becomes absolute square because it is a complex quantity had it been a, a real number then simply it would have been and the square of that particular uh, uh, real number. <coughs> so, the uh, if we assume uh, and the ergodicity uh, then one can derive the relationship between the power spectral density function of a process with the power spectral density function of the derivatives which we have done before through uh, the uh, differentiation of the autocorrelation function. Now, uh, using uh, this relationship that we have now uh, using this relationship we will now try to prove the same thing again. Uh, in this equation. Since uh, x dot uh, 
omega is equal to i omega into x omega because of uh, this equation that is x t is equal to x omega e to the power i omega t that is the frequency content of that. Now, if I uh, differentiate it with respect to t then x dot t will be equal to x dot omega e to the power i omega t and also we know that uh, x dot t is equal to i omega x omega e to the power i omega t that is coming from the differentiation of this. Now, if these two are equal then one can write down x dot omega is equal to i omega x omega that means this is equal to this. So, uh, that is uh, that becomes the starting um, point. Now, if x dot omega is equal to i omega into x s x omega then the power spectral density function of s x dot that will be equal to the absolute value square of this quantity that is i omega uh, absolute square into s x omega. So, that is how one can easily prove that s x dot is equal to omega square into s x that we have proved through the uh, differentiation of the power spec uh, autocorrelation function and before. Now, the if we wish to find out the cross power spectral density function between x and x dot then s x dot simply will become equal to i omega into s x that we have uh, you know uh, seen before with the relationship that if y is equal to a into x then s x y that becomes equal to a into s x and the complex conjugate of this will be equal to the s x dot x. Now, uh, the x uh, double dot omega that is the frequency content of acceleration that can be related to the frequency content of the displacement uh, using this relationship that is minus omega square because if we differentiate this once more then, then, then i omega multiplied by i omega that will become minus omega square. And uh, if this relationship holds good then s x double dot that will be equal to simply square of that quantity into s x. So, the uh, two relationship that is the derivative of s x um, derivative of x uh, uh, and uh, double derivative of x that is the velocity and acceleration they are power spectral density function are related to the power spectral density function of the parent process x uh, with the help of all uh, these two equations which we had uh, derived earlier, but now we are deriving it in a different way that is the relationship uh, we are using uh, uh, that exists between the velocity and the displacement for a harmonic excitation. Now, we are writing the same thing over here, but now the x is not a single um, random process, but uh, is a vector of random process and then uh, again the same relationship holds good only the difference here would be that s x dot would represent a matrix and s x also would represent a matrix and s x double dot uh, also would represent a matrix of the uh, power spectral density function of the acceleration. Now, with these uh, two relationships defined for the matrices of the power spectral density function of displacement uh, and power spectral density function of acceleration and velocities, 
one can find out the cross power spectral density function matrix between x and x dot and x dot and x. And here uh, this uh, particular term it can be shown that this is basically I have wrongly written over here in this equation this should be is equal to uh, uh, this that is i omega s x uh, the conjugate of this transpose that is uh, here this minus term will not be there i omega and here there will be a, a star, star means the complex conjugate of S x. And uh, uh, in this relationship of course, it, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, it will have the complex conjugate uh, term over here coming and this will be simply omega square. Now, uh, if we look into these two equations, uh, then one can see easily or one can prove easily that S x dot x and S x x dot that is the cross power spectral density function displaced uh, between the displacement and velocity and the cross power spectral density function uh, between the velocity and displacement if we add them together they would become equal to 0. That is uh, a very important relationship that we use in again solving many problems that is the cross power spectral density function between the displacement and velocity for two station, uh, for stationary processes uh, they turn out to be 0. Uh, because the sum of these two terms happens to be is equal to 0. Uh, uh, similarly, if we take the velocity that is the power spectral density function of velocity and the power spectral density function of acceleration, again the sum of their uh, cross power spectral density functions that turn out to be 0. So, in uh, many problems of structural engineering, we make use of uh, these relationships that is the between the displacement and velocity and velocity and acceleration, the sum of the cross power spectral density functions uh, they turn out to be 0. Now, let us uh, try to solve a problem. Uh, say for example, for example 3.7 that was uh, the problem in which you have a uh, inclined leg portal frame and uh, we had one sway displacement at the top, the frequency of that was equal to 12.24 and it is uh, excited uh, by an excitation and, and whose uh, frequency contents are obtained at uh, delta omega is equal to 0 0.2209 and the excitation was uh, that of a L centro earthquake and the power spectral density function of the L centro earthquake uh, the is digital values are given uh, in the book uh, or the appendix of the book. From that one can take the values of the power spectral density function or in it sampled at uh, delta omega is equal to 0 0.209 using those values one can find out the value of h omega for each value of omega and uh, the one can find out the sp, sp here will be simply is equal to uh, x double dot g that is s x x double dot g that is the uh, power spectral density function of the ground acceleration of the L centro and h omega absolute square here you can see that it is the k and m they are replaced by omega n square and uh, simply omega square over here because all through uh, the equation is divided by m. So, uh, 
substituting here the values of, you know, of different omegas, we can find out absolute value uh, square of h omega and we can also find out the, uh, the values of the S x double dot g that is the power spectral density function of the ground motion uh, uh, given in the appendix. So, multiplying them together we uh, get uh, the value of the power spectral density function of the response. Here in this figure the power spectral density function of the L center ground motion taken from the appendix that is plotted. Uh, in this equation the frequency response square h omega absolute square that is plotted against frequency and the multiplication of these two gives you the power spectral density function of the response uh, and that is again plotted over here against frequency. So, this becomes the, uh, the response of the uh, system uh, to the excitation. So, I think I stop at this. Uh, uh, what uh, we have discussed over here is a single point and excitation to uh, a single point uh, output sorry the single point excitation and single point uh, response known as CISO and for that the we uh, obtain the relationship between the power spectral density function of the response to the power spectral density function of the excitation and they are related to absolute value square of the frequency response function. And, and if we know the uh, values of the power spectral density function of the excitation, then immediately one can find out the power spectral density function of the response. So, uh, this can be uh, extended and, and we will we'll do it in the next lecture for a multi degree of freedom system uh, in which uh, we will not have a power spectral density function of a single input and a power spectral density function of a single output, but we will have the power spectral density function matrix of input or vector and the power spectral density function and matrix of the output vector uh, those two will be related uh, together uh, with the help of the frequency response function matrix and we will see how we replace the uh, absolute value square of the frequency response function that we have used for the single degree of freedom system that will be now replaced in a different way. Uh, so, and the proof of that uh, uh, would be shown in the next class. Mm -hmm.